Wow, good morning. morning. What a great way to start a Sunday morning, huh? My name is Jill Smith. I'm honored to be your worship leader this morning. Um, Thank you for coming. If you're here for the first time and you're just coming to see how worship is here in good old Las Cruces, thank you for coming. We always like new faces in our congregation. Um, First and foremost, at the end of your pew, you have what we call a fellowship pad. This is where you sign in to let us know that you are here. If you have changes, this is a good time to make changes like phone numbers, emails, addresses, whatever. It's also a really good thing for the new people here to put some kind of contact information so that we can contact you and thank you for coming and give you more information if you, uh, if you would like. So please sure that happens and tear that piece off and put it up so it's kind of sticking up so the ushers know to uh, pull that when they get at the end of service. Also, you have some prayer cards. These are for us to put our prayers and concerns on. Uh, fill this out, put it in the offering plate as it comes around. This is a really good time to put something that you would like the whole church to pray about. Um, They have a prayer group on Wednesday mornings that pray over these, but it also goes on this. And everybody gets one of these every Sunday morning. So it's a great time to put things that you need prayers for on there. Um, And we are a praying church, so we all know that prayers are answered in some way or another. So... Let's continue to do that. Um, Also, when it comes time for offering, we have these things here. Some of us do our tithing uh, online or other ways other than putting money into the offering itself. If you put this in there, as the offering plate comes up here and we pray over the money, your money will get prayed over also. So this is a good way to acknowledge that. Um, Let's see. That's all the maintenance, I think. You know... um, The UMW uh, ladies had a a small retreat a couple of weeks ago. Uh, We were up in the Rio Dulce Mountains, and uh, we had a a lovely time. We got to do uh, a lot of lovely things like walk by a stream, do scripture by the stream, got to look at the deer. Don't feed the deer. They don't let you feed the deer. But you have deer come right up to your door. I mean, it was just amazing how the deer, they just come up to your car. I've been to Rio Dulce a long time, so that was really wonderful. And we got to hash out a little bit about what's going to happen next year. So in all in all, it was a wonderful fellowship. Fellowship, that word to me means so much. It's so important that we have fellowship as Christians. Whether it be a small group that you're involved in, whether it be a Sunday school class, whether it be Sunday morning, or just with your friends. God always told us to, to be with those who are like us, people that will encourage us, people that, that feed us, as they say. And isn't it Susanna Wesley that started those little groups in her home so that the women would have a place to go and learn about God? I just think that fellowship is very important. And for some reason, that's been on my mind this morning. God put it in there this morning, I'm telling you. So I'm just telling you that fellowship is very important. And there's so many things you can do in this church where you can fellowship. It's all right here in the bulletin. It's on the website. You guys, this is a very outgoing, mission-oriented, loving church. And there's so much to do, and I hope I see every single one of you at one of those things in the rest of the year and the coming years. Thank you.
morning, church. Now we're going to fellowship by raising our voices together. So as you're able, please stand and sing. We do need to sing that at least five times, don't we? Well, it's not about the deer. It's about our living God and about sharing a sign of peace with each other. And turn to a neighbor and say, and my name is, peace be with you.
Please remain standing and, um, as we do the affirmation of faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, whether I'm weak or whether I'm strong, whether I'm sure or maybe confused, feeling loved or feeling you, I know a place. Where I can go, somewhere that winter winds don't blow, there I am warmed by loving arms, held with care next to your heart, and I'm safe within your arms.
I will never let go of one of my own, and I'm safe within your arms, Lord. I become a child again. I've come back to the source of love where he Now will you all bow your heads as we pray the offering. God of truth and light, we come to you from our daily lives that are full of scams and tricks, seeking to gain our confidence and steal and betray. In many ways, it makes us weary of opportunities to show compassion. Jesus has reminded us to trust in you and in your truth that speaks not through phones or emails, but directly to our hearts. As we give this morning, as you have called us, may we do so with joy and not fear. We pray this in the name of Christ, who intercedes for us, that we, may not, that we might know the truth. Amen. May be seated. As we 
not just pray over the money, but lift it up and glorify God's name as we stand in his place, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us continue in prayer to be safe in his arms. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, and Brother Jesus, what an amazing and a beautiful morning as we start November, as we set the table, uh, your table for communion, as we're looking forward, excited to hear good news from you, we need to do first things first. We acknowledge your name. We lift up all the blessings you have given us. We know and confirm that we're safe within your arms. But we also need to confess this morning that, yes, we forgot about it again. And there was one day and one moment this week where we just said, I'm all alone in the world and I can't take it anymore and I don't want any more surprises and I messed up or I'm just lost and I don't know anymore what all this is for and it's too much or too little and, and, and Lord, we start complaining instead of uh, praising your name in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You said, this is how it goes. That you will remind us and said, remember, you are safe within my arms and I will feed you. I will replenish whatever is missing and I will move you forward, grow you more to become a little bit more like heaven on earth. So God, we confess, we repent, we ask you, are you still good with us? Is your word still right for us this morning? And you say, yes, here we are, God, your children. And we thank you for the absolution and that you say, you are safe within my arms. And try again. And if we fall again, get back up and try better and harder and stronger or more relaxed. Because I'm with you. And I can only tell you when you call on me and say, how great thou art, I will pull through. So here we are, oh God, your wonderful congregation, flock from everywhere. Some just coming back from a, from a longer time of traveling and some are getting ready for traveling again and some are trying to make their home here and some who are living through the changes in a place that they always call their home. We pray for our neighborhood as they're adjusting to the challenges also but are recognizing this is not just the church with that wonderful fall festival but they're out there and inside and they're, they're just visible and and want to live with us in partnership. And we're praying for this world around us, the ones that we are in mission with already. When we give our dollar to Amcor, when we pay for another goat that goes through heifer in one of the countries where people want to build self-sustainability. When we give a little tithing that helps somewhere a country where there's catastrophes going on, where people are fleeing where they don't have any more home and no more safety. We're praying for the ones who are going through troubled times politically, that the leaders and the followers will understand who is in charge and whose arms they can be safe within. I know, God, that you can pull through and touch everybody inside out and that changes are possible. And Lord, there's so much to do out there for a world that needs peace, understanding, balance, and wisdom. Lord, we pray for our own, for the ones who are grieving and mourning, for the ones who are going in and out of the hospitals, for the ones who are in pain, for the ones who feel lonely, and yes, they all said we're a lovely church, but nobody called. We're praying for our eyes, for the one person that we have just forgotten, and that needs that one card, that little sign, a cookie, something. We're praying for our marriages, for our families, for our children and grandchildren, for education, for the schools, for the high schools, universities, for the students and their teachers. And we're praying for these wonderful people who are on our list who said, put my name on there. And, and maybe it's gonna make a difference, of course it will. So this morning I lift up Sharon and Olivia and Galen. 
I pray for Christy and Raymond, for Tina, for Evelyn. I pray for Nancy and Ellen, for Della and for Louis. I pray for your church, for the circles, the men's, the missions, the youth work, the after school, the preschool, the ramps, the staff, for administration and worship, for music and preaching the word, for study groups and bringing more people on board wherever we are that we are your messengers in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And everybody says, Amen. Now hear from Psalms 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your words to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works and meditate. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him and to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him and all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh with bless his holy name forever and ever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, our Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Joseph Parker could feel his heart pounding against his ribs. He stood on the 27 yard line, his eyes focused on the point where his holder would place the football. As he visualized the kick, the roar of the crowd hushed to a whisper. His team stirring 25 point comeback in the fourth quarter against Auburn University faded from his memory. He even forgot that this was the greatest moment of his life, that in a matter of seconds he would either be the hero of the independence ball or a scruffy billy goat. Hut, 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 hut. Time seemed to stand still. The ball was there and Parker stepped into the kick as he had thousands of times before. But even before his leg fully extended, he knew that he'd hooked it to the right. As the Auburn defense erupted in joy, he stared in disbelief at the goal posts. In the last play of his four-year career, he had failed his team. Army would finish their 10-win season with a bowl game blemish, and it was his fault. He was sick. But then an amazing thing happened. In the dog-eat-dog world of college football, Joseph Parker was offered absolution. As he stood on the field trying to fight back his tears, one by one, his teammates came and stood beside him. There was nothing to say to ease the pain, so they didn't try. Instead, they clumsily pawed Joseph's golden helmet tapped him on the shoulder and embraced him. They gave me back my energy. They'd given him much more than that. They'd given him a chance for a new life. When we talk of the Psalms, 
We talk of a God who is doing exactly that. And you have stories over stories where you can share it with us and, and witness right here. But there was that one moment, right? And you just missed it. Where there was failure and you suddenly noticed. And the witness this morning comes out of the book of Psalms telling you right there. At that moment, God was right there. God was near you, bundled, safe within his arms. And he would stand next to you and he wouldn't take that ball out of your hands and say, you're a loser, you're fired. And God was there near you at that moment and made sure, of course, he's the organizer, that others would piggyback and come and stand next to him also, you also. You have tons of stories of that. And God was near you at that moment and he would say, look in my eyes, look at me. Yeah, I love you and I mean it. And it would sink in at one moment whether that happened or not, and God would be near you and tell you right there and clap you on the back and say, you're still a great fellow. You're just one of a kind. Except the last sentence is wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. Except he wouldn't say, you're just one of a kind and you're just a great person. You're just Frederick <laughs> and, and Hildegard. That's just Billy here. Yeah. And Maria, that's just who she is. Our message this morning is about a change that's coming there. And this is where the mistake is coming in in our theology most of the time. That we're treating God like, yes, God never leaves you alone. He's coming with you whether you're playing the game of your life or whether you're just doing your little thing. And he's standing with you. All that is correct. But he wouldn't say the last part and said, just stay who you are. You're a great guy. And we forget about that last sentence over and over. And the Psalms this morning remind us of that exactly. That it comes with, oh, here's the word, change. Transformation. You are not anymore Frederick and Hildegard and Billy and Maria. You are mine. And when you look at me, I said, yeah, we know that. So what does that mean? Then I tell you, this is what the Psalms are preaching. Back and forth, 150 in the book, what we call the Bible. If you are mine, your job all around 24-7 is to bless me. To praise God. It's not anymore about my achievements. Look what I got. It's about praising God, blessing Him. I have someone in the congregation right now, and he's going through the book of Psalms. And he shared with me, I don't know where I started there, but this is kind of redundant. Exactly. It's 150 times the same thing. How many times do you read it in that psalm? Bless the Lord, extol His name. This is what this is about. It's a change. You're not anymore Frederick and Hildegard. You are mine. And the definition of mine means your job is to praise and bless God. That's it. It's kind of a strange thing. I mean, I understand that God blesses me, right? Count your blessings. We do that over and over and say, nice handwriting of God. Achievement, done, done, success, moving forward. God has blessed me, yeah? But he's turning it around and all these psalms do it. And we keep just sailing through it and said, we are supposed to bless God. Have you ever tried to make sense to this? What does it mean to bless God? Oh, you're great too, right? <laughs> God doesn't need that. Did we not learn in all these lessons before that God is almighty, all powerful, all patient. He's the designer of heaven and earth. Earth, give me a break. Why would he need my little clapping on the back? You did good, God. Really good. I bless you. Extol you. What is it? What is the change in there that suddenly makes everything turn upside down so that you're Life as a disciple of Jesus Christ is to bless God in all his might. Did you ever think that through? You did good, God. Thank you, God. Is that like the way I want to raise my boys? That they, you know, they, they get a nice dinner, German dinner. 
thanks for dinner, and then they disappear, right? Yeah. At least that thanks for dinner is coming in. Success, right? Is that what God wants from us when he said, you are not anymore the old person who's out there on the football field and I'm standing next to you, but I'm changing you around. So you are mine and your job is to bless God. How would that make a difference and why is it so important? Blessing God, thanking him, praising the Almighty. I need my ushers to find me a water. I forgot to bring a water. Is anybody would go and get me one? It's hard to praise and bless God, right? Yeah. Makes your throat go dry in the midst of it. When I was um, living in Puerto Rico, we had a wonderful thing that we would do on Friday night. Take my mic off for a minute. Excuse me. We would go out on Friday night. Anybody been to old San Juan? The old city of San Juan? Here we go. You get the picture. Beautiful colonial city. One of the oldest cities in the United States. And there's a ferry going from one of the poorest neighborhood, Catania, on the other parts of San Juan. And we would ride that ferry with the locals to the old city, old San Juan. Now you need to know um, beautiful alley, uh, trees there. Thank you. I'll just need that real fast. Appreciate you very much. We would ride the ferry up there to celebrate what the locals do on a Friday night. They would ride their boat over um, with fake crocs, jogging pants. You, you knew where they were coming from, really from areas what we would call the slums. But it's Friday night. And some women would come with their high heels and beautiful dresses. And it's loud on that simple, simple ferry, but you ride it there and you end up in the middle of old San Juan. And there is the Paseo de la Princesa. Do you know that one, Mike? It's right where the boat lands. And there is the alleyway with the trees. And there's live music. And there's people who are just hanging out. And there's people who are getting their little shaved ice cream and sitting there together. And then it starts. There is the music playing, live music. Homemade, you know, with the pumpkins that are now instruments and a comb, t -t 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 something like this. And you see the couples dancing. I I'm not talking dancing like this, right? But we're talking the salsa, which is not a lot of movement. But couples, probably ages 90 and up, who made it on that ferry. And for that night, because it's Friday night, are dancing, I mean dancing together. The music. And it becomes this beautiful, beautiful music that you can just not escape from. It goes like this. And they're running up and down the aisles there with each other. And it becomes a dance. It sounds so different from where they came from. And the music sounds more like we love the beautiful sunsets and the sunrises. But we also don't want God to take anything away from us there. A lot of patriotism, of course, Puerto Rico, right? But they're dancing together and they're dancing in a way that you can say, of course, they're in the Paseo de la Princesa. They are suddenly princesses and, and princes. And the cookies, the frogs are a little bit chirping in the background. And it goes on and on. We can notch it up for a second, Jeff. Can you speak it louder? Do you want to dance? Anybody?
You get the idea. There's folks, and when the last ferry is leaving, probably 11.30, they're going to go back on that ferry, and everybody's going home, including the millers, and we're nervous that our car is still there on the other side, and it never got stolen. Yes. With our three Walgreen bags and whatever we needed to bring for that night. Thank you, Jeff. It's a moment where the transformation is happening, where people who were kind of in their burdens and challenges, and tomorrow it'll happen again, are riding a ferry over to the Paseo de la Princesa, the pass of the princess and the prince. And they've done it for 500 years. And they're just dancing with live music there. It's not organized, but it is. Puerto Rican organization, yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that picture. Even George Miller got Heike Miller to dance with her, which is right a challenge, because it's not embarrassing anymore, and everybody's out there on the, st on the street. Can you imagine? I don't even know how to dance salsa. It's easy. You stay close together, and then you move a little bit, and that's how God works with you. When I'm asking the question of what on earth does God want from us if we're now not anymore our own and Frederick and Erika, but we're his, you are mine. And with it and through that you are mine, our job is to bless his name. Maybe it looks a little bit like the salsa you can dance on a Friday night at the Paseo de la Princesa in Old San Juan. Maybe it's not anymore us football players facing the next challenge and say, God, I need your help now. Maybe it is about that blessing that you say, I'm yours, God, and I will extol your name over and over the same thing so that I live out of that rhythm and out of that partnership and that love that you gave me, being led by you and becoming a different person for one night and maybe tomorrow too. Maybe God's concept doesn't just count for a Friday night in Old San Juan. Maybe it counts even for Monday morning in Las Cruces. We should try it out. And if you, I see you dancing on Lucas on Monday morning, I will clap for you, all right? You can try, I'll stop the traffic. What is it that we bless God's name? We need to do and work and do theology. Very briefly, all it says there is we make sure that God claims his property and that we acknowledge it. Period. I can repeat that. That God claims his property and we acknowledge and say, yes, that's the way it is. It's God's. Blessing God is announcing the revelation that God has given to the world. I made heaven and earth, period. No discussion, no negotiation. It's not up for negotiation, it's God's revelation. Do you want to know the Greek word for that? It's apocalypse. Did you know that? We're taking away the veil. The veil, phane, means to hide. And so I probably preached completely wrong last Sunday when I was talking about this, you know, don't fold it, roll it. Maybe we should preach, unroll it. If we're blessing God's name, we should unroll it. We should make sure that the whole world can see this is God's. Everything here is God's. Bless his holy name. God already knows, but the world needs to know. So next time you ask God and say, why do you need me to bless you? You already know who you are. He will answer, because it's good for you. It's God's world. Thank you. And, and, and it's good for the other ones too. It's God's world. Don't touch it. Don't mess it up. Who are you to think? Because I'm dancing with my God through a Friday night in Puerto Rico. Because I know that he leads me to become a princess and a prince in God's kingdom. And then with it and through it, we extol his holy name and say, blessed be the Lord in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And you are good with this. You look at me, we knew that already. And I know you do. The, the problem starts somewhere further. We call it the revelation generalis. 
The general revelation, everybody knows that, uh, well, trying to at least accept it still, that someone started this whole thing, and that's probably God. Even the scientists say that. But we stop there. And we said, that's the revelation, period. And, and we can do it every day, because we then say, so what was good this week about God's revelation? And you'll have tons, your whole newsletter bulletin is full of results of that, right? Well, let's see, um, we had candles of saints up there. That's revelation of God, right? They made it home last week, All Saints Day. Two are still up there, because there's still some more that we need to lift up and say, God, thank you. Bless his name, general revelation, apocalypse, take the veil off, unroll it right there. Um, we have 24 now in a middle school, after school program during the week. Great, it's God's. Thank you for that. We're now up to 51 enrollment at preschool, right, Jane? Whoa, from where were we? 30 something? We don't want to talk about it. We want to talk about this one. God's general revelation. Check. It's God's world. How are we surprised? Of course. Good deal. We cooked. We prepared for 200 meals in the soup kitchen. Who was there at El Caldito this week? How many did you feed? Anybody else? A lot of people that we have never seen before, says Jane. Well, someone gave me a count of over 300 are sitting there in the soup kitchen, El Caldito over there, where our Methodist team is coming in once a week. And you stretch the soup, right? It worked. Thank you, God. That's general revelation. Good stuff. But if we stop right there, then we can say, yeah, and it's nice. And then our dance will stop on Friday night. We go back on the ferry and end up in our normal world. Challenges, nobody's going to dance on Monday morning, right? Yeah. And then we're back on the football field. We'll say, my God, you were there, and I thank you for that, you know, how you helped me in my challenges. Then we start talking to God like you, excuse me, sometimes talk about your loyal dog, and he was always on my side. That's not what it is. The sound lifts it around and said, the problem is that you stop right there. You need to turn it to special revelation. Now, you're smart. You say the Psalms were written way before Jesus Christ came on earth. You're right, right? But we are reading it as a Christian congregation, looking with our eyes, with a cross in my back, through the Psalms again. It said, if you, God, called me not just to claim and acknowledge what you claim to your own, we also need to see your special handwriting, revelation, apocalypse, taking the veil off in our times right now, as you did with your son, Jesus Christ. And we have a hard time. We're relying on some preachers. We're relying on the United Methodist Church political leaders to tell us, they said, yeah, there is a, there is a, there's probably some goal in the whole thing. It is not up to the preachers. It's up to everybody in the church to find the handwriting, this special revelation in Jesus Christ. Your Savior, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that this world, who's looking right now the way it is, will turn and be transformed into the world that is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Do you know how many people I had in my office this week? One after the one is calling me up or coming for a visit and said, we love this church, but where is the Methodist church he heading in 2024? And I said, we're going to do what we're doing now. We're going to bless God's name. Oh. And, and then maybe if we have extra time and we'll ever get bored, we'll talk about homosexuality too. But we haven't even gotten to the part where we can read all these beautiful handwritings of the general revelation, blessing God's name, that we will reanalyze it and claiming it through the eyes and the hands of Jesus Christ yet. Watch this. I'm going to start with the toughest one. Can you see the number on the back of your bulletin? There's givings in there. Some people say, I watch that every week. Right? Yep. And there's a number that is in red. 
You gave amazing, the money counters. I don't know who's giving what, but I get the givings of every week. Counters come in on Monday. And last week was a good week. But we're in the red, right? Jim Peters, are you on finance? See, si. si. oh, well, now you speak Spanish. <laughs> yeah. I would too, if I were in that topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if you're going through the general revelation, I said, well, we are in the red. We're obviously misbudgeted. Or the church is hurting. That's up to finance committee. I'm not going in the details. If you're going through it with the eyes of Jesus Christ, who was crucified, died and buried, resurrected, to be there and to come back for the living quick and the dead one day, then there is a handwriting and a challenge for all of us in there. and said, Jesus Christ, you've blessed this church already so much. The giving's not going down. The, the expenses are going up because we laid it out there. We said, church, do you think that this is Jesus Christ's call for this church right now? And everybody said, let's try it. And it wasn't just we try it. But we feel like God is calling us. Right, lay leader, Lana? We're going to lay it out there, the fleece. We unfold it. Revelation. And now the challenge is up and said, Jesus Christ, through your power, by infusion of the Holy Spirit, will you make that a handwriting that not scares everybody off and said, miscalculation, we need to downsize, downsize. Or we're going to say, we'll lift it up. Jesus Christ, do something. If the calling is still that we need to have all this stuff doing all the work, no pizza parties, right? No baby showers out of that budget. I want to make that very clear. But as stingy and German as we can to put it all into the mission because Christ called us that everybody should see they will have life, eternal life. Go! And God and Christ will find the giving through it if we're on the right track. Pete, you need some water too? Yeah. He doesn't like me talking about that. He's on finance too if you want to talk to Pete. Do you see what we're doing? We're going from just watching what's happening here week after week, and we could go on and on and on. But we need to read what the architecture behind that is. If Jesus Christ is the Savior, if I'm not living anymore for myself, but he said, you're mine. You are there to bless God, my blessing, even through my giving, even through my ministries and my missions and my worship is all about God's work through Jesus Christ to make death become life, to make destruction become the future. The special revelation that we're talking about and that we haven't preached about enough, this is a confession, is a revelation that comes in the gospel and in judgment. It's two. God is speaking to us in the psalm. We hear it right now about his blessings and how he's uplifting us through the good news. As well as through his wrath. It's in the Bible passage right there. It's grace and wrath. He's going to talk to us through the law to say, on the right track, move further, step back. It's a, a dac didactic. It's a... It's an educational tool that God is bringing to us to move us further out of our comfort zone so that we live through the power of Jesus Christ. There is no in-between. We can say a little bit, we, we love the sunsets. And then we also love Jesus Christ as our brother. <laughs> if he's in charge and if he's my savior, he will push us beyond our comfort zones and he will make and supply and put the claim out and pull it through. And we've seen it a hundred times over the last year. Amen. We had a mission committee meeting this week. And one of our youngest person on the team in his 30s. He raised the question when I asked everybody, what, what is mission, right? If we're a missional church. I'm talking about finances too. And I said, well, someone needs to go out to these youngsters of my generation. And tell them the good news. We almost fell off our chairs. Oh, we just thought mission is not going to hurt anybody. We're not talking about Jesus Christ. It's a church. Yes. Everybody needs to see the special revelation reflected in your and my. The way we sing. The way we worship. The way we study. The way we do stuff. 
It's not a little secret on the bottom and we're also a church. It's because we are the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ whose life is paid so that I get to live eventually also, eternally. And if he claims that everything needs to be interpreted in a new way, then we'll take the results of the general revelation and bless God's name and say, now show me what that means. My homework for you and for all of us for the coming week is that we're going to go and take the new events, the results of every day, things you can plan and things that surprise you, and put it in front of God, dancing with God, and say, and now you tell me in the name of Jesus Christ, what does that mean? Do you see the difference? Then we're not over getting overwhelmed by results and results and new ideas and new information, but that we get to interpret it in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the educational tool of the law within it and what is the gospel in it? Dance it. Dance it with God and he will lead you and he'll make it clear. It's a, it's a total different take on, on reading and praying through the Psalms, 150 of them. And did I mention that this one is one of the five ones in the Bible that goes alphabetically? If you would see it in Hebrew, you could see that every verse stanza in there. We shouldn't skip any more verses, right, Kay? When we sing the Psalms, sing the hymns, that every verse in there stands for a letter in the alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet. It's amazing. So you can go through your alphabet of this week and last week and the church week. And say, general revelation, God in charge. We know that already. You know it. A special revelation in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean for now and for tomorrow? And you and I will be amazed how much we learn how to dance. It's easy. And be like princess and, and princess on the Paseo de la Princesa in Old San Juan. Just stay close. To the one who's going to move us and who's going to explain something to us in a new way. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Do you remember that one? Okay. And we're going to learn our alphabet. How does it end? Now I. Help me. Tell me what you think of me is how it ends. All right, I want to know. I don't want to know what you think of me. But, but I want to know that God will know in the end when we bless the psalm through with the whole alphabet what you think of me. And he will stay right there where he started us with us today. You're mine. <laughs> you go by my rhythm. I'll make you a princess and a prince. But read your life and the challenges and the joys through the eyes of you are the sister and the brother of my son, Jesus Christ, who made an end to death and offered us, gave us eternal life. And with it and through it, we're going to uncover the veils, uncover the elements and make sure that everybody out there will see it and know it. This is about Jesus Christ. When we cook 300 meals. When we make another ramp. How long was that one? Over 30 meters? Yeah. When we're talking to a child out there. This is about Jesus Christ. Unveil. Revelation. Special. And he's got a plan for you as much as he has for me. Do you want to come and dance? The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we are preparing this table, we know that it's, it's not our table. 
It's God's table. As we're preparing it in a way where you and I will feel the veil is off. This is the body of Christ, of Christ. Special revelation. Broken for you and for many. As we're drinking from this cup, you and I will know, should know, that it is about a new covenant in his blood. About being a new person about eternal life and everybody who says I'm ready for that and I will celebrate the liturgy with you all is welcome as part of this. So we are celebrating this liturgy with our communion ushers and what you'll see today for the ones who are here first time we're going to do a little dance pilgrimage through the sanctuary come to the front after the liturgy is celebrated and receive elements you won't receive a piece of bread in a cup on a tray today, but we're going to break you off a piece of bread. And then you also get a cup with the juice. It's a sign. It's a sacrament of our living God. And everybody's welcome to attend who celebrates liturgy with us. Now, if you're not comfortable with either coming to the front or with getting a bread break and broken off with uh, our ushers with the gloves on. We have sealed cups and just let the ushers know also on that. Okay? Let us pray. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is to be made ready for those who love him, who want to love others. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little who you have been here often and who you have not been here for a long time. You, you have tried to follow and you, you have failed. Come not because it is I who invite you, it is our Lord. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. So now following Jesus' example, command, we take bread and juice the ordinary things of the world which Christ will make special, as he has said a prayer before sharing. This is what we will say today. Gratitude, praise, hearts lifted high, voices full and joyful, these you deserve. So when we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name and no faith and no future, you called us children. When we lost our way or turned away, you did not abandon us. When we came back to you, your arms opened wide in welcome. And look, you prepare a table for us, offering not just bread, not just juice, wine, but your very self, so that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. You are worth all our pain and all our praise. So now in gratitude, we join our voices to those of the church on earth and in heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Take away the sin of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, come and eat. This is my body which is broken for you and many for the deliverance of sins. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it to them and said, come and drink from it, all of you. For this is the cup of salvation, poured out for you and many for the deliverance of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, our Lord, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, knowing that you are not just standing next to us when we're going through special challenges, 
but that you're claiming that this is your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and that you want us to acknowledge it the way we get nourishment right now, forgiveness of sins, to go out and read your world through this handwriting. So we ask you for wisdom, for understanding, and we're going to bless your name and extol your holy name forever and ever. Amen. May the communion ushers come forward, please. Marianne, this is Mary Lou. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Pam, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Jesus said, this is my body. Amen. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me, Bob. Until the Lord returns came. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, Pete. Betty, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know, Mr. Jeff and Mr. Bill. Can we go back to that one hymn that I skipped over? I, we're going way over time, but do you have time to finish a hymn? Because some folks will tell me, we need to sing all the verses. How great thou art has two more verses. Is that possible? Thank you. Would you all please stand?
once said our soloist is coming back next week. Would you raise your hand? <laughs> thank you so much, music team. And I know they don't want to thank you. We're doing it for God. Amazing. Bundled up in God's arms. One announcement. Uh, tomorrow, our celebration of life in honor of Bill Betty is at 11 o'clock. The announcement today in the, the obituary in the newspaper still says one o'clock. Please help us spread the news. It is 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary, followed by military honors on the front of our, of our premises. Okay? And now go enjoy the Sunday school teachers are walking up and down out there and killing me. So I time. Receive God's blessing and then bless God all week. May the Lord watch over your comings in and goings out from this day on and forevermore in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.